We have amongst us uh, some of the leading uh, OTT players, broadcasters. We have somebody who has invested in content, produced content. We have somebody from the advertising side. We have regional, we have global, we have uh, Indian uh, uh, stalwarts. So thank you, gentlemen, for making out this time. And, and, and I'm really a privilege to be among all of you, uh, uh, leading personalities who are probably running uh, what is the cutting edge of media today, right? So really happy to be part of this. I'll just set the stage. Uh, with a bit of introduction of where we are headed. Uh, and then in this panel, what we are looking to do is really glance into the future uh, and really glance into the future and look into where we are headed and specifically talk about content, consumption, and the next stage of experience. So gentlemen, I think uh, while we gaze in, uh, I'm just going to set in with, with a bit of context, but then all over to you to see how we are going ahead in the future from that place. Now, we've been hearing about how media is changing. We've been hearing about uh, what's the next wave coming through. But really, if you look at content consumption beyond, you will realize that today media has become a borderless ecosystem. You will see that about 60 to 90% of content uh, which if it's for kids, for sports, and so on and so forth, is being watched beyond India. And 40% of the revenue is coming beyond the borders of India for creators, for, for, for kids' channels, and beyond. So that truly means that media is going beyond borders. It's no longer about just a country or a particular TG. So we truly have a borderless ecosystem from that perspective. The other important thing is connected TV is edging towards close to about 100 million in the next few years, which means that it'll be bigger than some of the DTH bases and so on and so forth. It's all IP-led. The experience there is completely different from what we are doing today from a programming standpoint, right? And in the morning, we also heard a very interesting thing. It's not who, it's not what, it's also about when you're programming, right? The, the new 10 o'clock prime time, uh, the 11.30 binge, everything is becoming a different programming section from that altogether. So there is a lot happening there. That means almost premium co content coming into OTT, 4,000 hours plus of content coming in. So from a content ecosystem, the landscape is completely changing. But if we go beyond and look at what is happening from an overall uh, ecosystem beyond what we call today traditional media, Gaming, for example, is going to grow to about 500 million plus gamers. So that's a new ecosystem that is emerging. The user-generated content, the content creators who were, who were otherwise generating content, today have become mainstream. They are generating revenues. They are translating into movies. They are translating into OTT web series and beyond. So there is a new ecosystem growing there as well. So everything from the overall environment, there are a lot of things changing and coming together. But we also look at advertising. This is clearly the very interesting part. You're seeing almost 300 billion rupees of SME advertising coming into India, right? Which was the domains of some of the larger platforms. Today, that is going across. What was hardly 5 billion, I mean, I, I was here for four or five years back. It was hardly less than about 5 billion rupees. Today, it's about 300 billion plus, right? And you would also see that the transaction ecosystem, moving beyond advertising subscription, the TWOD ecosystem is set to become about 20 billion rupees from that perspective, which means the monetization also is moving. So guys, that sets the context for where we are, because whether you look at content, whether you look at monetization, whether you look at platforms that's being played out, it's all uh, changing as we speak. And in that context, I think this panel is going to be really interesting because we're going to talk about what are the next frontiers uh, what are the next battlegrounds, and where do we see the leaders really playing from that perspective? So with that, if I can just quickly start out by saying that today there are many Indians, many TGs, right? And many niches we are programming for, and we're probably going cross-platform. Cross-platform no longer means TV and digital. It means social media, it means connected TVs, it means fast and everything. So Farzad, if I can start with you, in, in that kind of an ecosystem, how do you see content and programming changing? Yeah, thanks, thanks, Raghav. No, I think what we've seen over the last 12 to 24 months especially has been an explosion of content of various kinds. I think conceptually, if you look at it, uh, let's say about three to five years back, there were a hundred 
content creators in the country, right? Which is essentially what you would refer to as the large studios and uh, you know the large production houses, etc. I think what's happened is the world has now changed to a place where there are over a hundred thousand creators, right? That's simplistically the way that that I would look at it. So you have an individual who can create content. And then you marry that with various kinds of platforms. So you're now seeing, um, you know, if, if on a particular platform you had content from, let's say, five creators, 10 creators, maybe 20 creators, you're now seeing each platform have, at least in the digital space, upwards of maybe 400 to 500 on each platform, right? So that's essentially spun the game on its head. I think the other thing that's really happened is that We've now gone into uh, you know, a scenario where the cost of content, you know, there, there was just a few years back, not very long ago, when a lot of conversation, even in this room, was about how many million subs do we get to and so on and so forth, and you know, cost, uh, you know, grow at any cost. I think that's changed. And there's a lot of rationalization that's, that sort of come in uh, which is a good thing because we're now all working towards a sustainable uh, business model and a proposition uh, as we go along. And then you've had various milestone changes that have happened again over the last, especially the last 12 months, with things that you expected that would be behind a paywall uh, are in front of a paywall. And certain properties that you expected to be available in front of the paywall are actually now behind the paywall. And that's actually where a large bunch of uh, the new 100,000 creators in the world are beginning to, to benefit from. And of course, then you add that languages is growing and, and you, know, you've, you have someone like Vishnu who's, who's grown a business uh, you know, on the back of that. Um, and it's a very, very interesting place. But I can assure you of one thing, what the world looks like today in the entertainment space is definitely not what it would look like in the next 24 months. So if we think we've seen a lot of change, I think it's honestly just the tip of the iceberg. Do very interesting because you say that because we, we keep talking about in media about how we, it's going to transform and so on and so forth. We're not new to transformation, but for somebody like you to say within the next 24 men, months, the entire scenario is going to look different. And very few, uh, some of the interesting points you made, 100 going to 100,000 guys on the input side, on the ingest side, that is changing the dynamics completely. And what's behind a paywall, what's beyond a paywall, and I think we have seen a few hundred million guys coming on, on, on sports, so that's also a revelation from that perspective. Very interesting. But you then sort of span across AWARD and different platforms. But Sogato, from your point of view, right, when you're looking at it, uh, from broadcast, SWOD, and also a platform running there, the experience there is also changing, right? The kind of content, the kind of premium content coming in, the kind of niches you're programming for, how do you see that landscape changing? Okay, I think uh, per Parzad uh, hinted at that, I think, a uh, couple of years back when we were in the same ballroom discussing uh, the SWOD market and the growth of premium television. It was a different world altogether. Cut to 24 months later, we think uh, now that content ecosystem, the lines have become very blurred. Uh, the conversations that we were having a few years back were about the expense of content, how expensive content is going to bring in the next few million uh, subscribers on the platform, and it was subscriber at any cost, right? But that wheel has turned, and now we are talking about profitability. And when we talk about profitability, there is a certain kind of maturity which has come in, a certain kind of rationalization which is coming in terms of making content. But also, I think uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in this world, I think it has become a little more democratic where you are becoming a little more uh, consumer focused, right? And that consumer has become much, much more larger, right? You're not merely talking about a few million. Uh, you're talking about hundreds of millions today. And, uh, and what we see is that the programming also for all our you know, leading uh, platforms, all linear channels, are gearing towards 
uh, serving that consumer. Uh, for if I if I tell you, like you know, in our platform, for example, you know, we have on one hand extremely high quality premium content, things like Scam and Rocket Boys, uh, which have sort of led the way for Sony Live to be where it is today. But we have real, we also realized that the fact that there is a large consumer base which we are not serving, and we need to be cognizant of that, and which is why a lot of what we call, you know, habit-forming TV-like content is sort of coming in. Uh, you know, the, right now it's not about, about one content against the other, right? There is a choice for the consumer to choose her content from wherever she wants to. Uh, it could be a streaming platform, it could be TV, it could be social media, it could be uh, wherever, right? So I think you're constantly trying to fight many battles together. What has happened, I feel that you have managed, in this also has uh, emerged a new breed of makers. What, you, what was not mainstream, uh, say a few quarters back, has become mainstream, right? Uh, and hence you find those kind of makers finding uh, a sort of a platform, uh, a, a network platform to show their uh, content. So I think in a, in a bit of a reorg has happened, both in terms of business as well as in terms of uh, perception. Uh, the second one is I think for the first time, uh, at least I can speak for some of the bigger networks that uh, and I can speak for myself, for example, I think for Sony, we've, we've, we've really, really inordinately invested in making the platform much more uh, pan-India, right? So a lot of investment in terms of creating, curating content outside of HSM has happened. And that you would find uh, more and more as, as we enter the new financial year. Uh, that apart, uh, we've, we've tried various monetizing models. Uh, if you look, what you, what you just said, things which you would have assumed would be behind the paywall are not behind the paywall any longer. But things which we would have you know, otherwise thought uh, would not make any sense keeping behind the way paywall are doing phenomenally well, right? So I think it's an interesting times, but as we have seen over the last few years, uh, media is sort of, it's so dynamic that nothing is, nothing is constant and you've got to sort of pivot every couple of quarters, right? If not every quarter. Uh, and that's been the learning for all of us. And I'm assuming I can speak for Vishnu who again, you know, runs a very specific region specific uh, uh, platform. No, interesting you said this, uh, because one, you talked about the opportunity for the consumer, there are multiple choices, but you also made this interesting point that there are many more creators who can now come to the fold, right? And you, for, for, for as a platform, you're looking to include a lot more people, and many of them here would be creating content. Uh, now, suddenly, they have the access to come into a leading platform and, and showcase their skills beyond social media, beyond create a network. So that's opening up. The other interesting thing you said is about growing Pan-India and going to regional, right? That's a great segue to sort of also bring in uh, Rabindra. You look at it from, now look at this. We, we are talking about a borderless media, right? And regional was supposed to be niche, right? And it was supposed to be two different worlds. There is one world growing beyond borders, one world which is niche, but that's not how it is, right? Now regional is also spanning beyond. Right? And like Sogato was saying, as he's expanding beyond uh, Pan-India, you guys are expanding beyond. So how do you see regional content in this new paradigm? What's changed for you? So regional content is the content which is experimenting, which is expanding, and which is crossing boundaries. Okay. I'll give you an example. Uh, we run the largest content creating company in Punjabi language, PTC Punjabi. Now my main viewership on digital is in Canada then Pakistan, then USA, and then Europe. 65% of my revenue on digital is coming from those areas. So we are no longer regional. We used to think we are regional. Uh, only Punjab will see us. Where else will we go? And we were all the time, even today, battling with the advertising agencies' mindset that you are only 
ten percent of the bark rating, so you will get only this much money. Doesn't matter how much you are investing in the content. If you are making a award show, a film award show in Punjabi, which is bigger than film fair, doesn't matter. Because ultimately your audience size was this much. Suddenly this area opened up. Suddenly I can reach every home in Pakistan, in USA, in Canada, in Australia, in Europe, and places like Spain. So uh, uh, that has been the biggest revolution for us. And that also forced us to create content which is cross-platform. Mm. For a long time people were creating content, this is for OTTs, so it will be this kind of content. This is for TV, so it will be this kind of content. Now the next thing we are experimenting with is VR in content. Mm. So for the last four years, all of our entertainment shows, sports coverages, even Gurbani that we broadcast from the Golden Temple is available in VR. You put a headgear, then you put your mobile in it and you'll feel that you're actually in the scene. So this year we are launching a VR fiction series. So the content delivery, content consumption, content creation is changing every minute. And two years is a long time, I'm saying next six months you don't know what is going to happen. Who knew cricket will become free? So, whole lot of content delivery mechanism, content consumption patterns and content creation are changing. Right. So, that's the biggest revolution that is happening. Wow. So, for somebody, uh, you know, you've really redefined what is regional now, right? It's no longer regional, it's borderless. You're talking about Canada being a uh, uh, market, Pakistan being a market, US being a market. So, it is truly borderless. But you're also changing the formats, right? Whether you're making it more immersive, you've, you've got VR into it, experimenting, and, and that experimentation is yes, a key word. Plus, we're creating local content in those countries. 30% of the content on my Canada Beam is produced in Canada. Wow. We are the only Indian company which has a studio in Canada, which has a studio in USA. Again, I proudly claim that we are the only Indian channel which is impaneled in the White House. The hmm. only Indian channel inside White House, where my reporter reports every day from inside the White House. Wow. It's PTC. Wonderful. So, a lot of experimentation, lot of crossing boundaries and breaking mindsets. Ten years ago, I might never have thought that we can do this. Hmm. But today it is happening, it is getting. And that should, Vishnu, for you, really is validating what you set out. You were one of the first guys who went out to do a real regional focus. I mean, if I can no longer call it regional, right? But uh, a focused OTT. And today, now you have a market which is much beyond, right? How do you see uh, from your content lens? It used to be web series. It used to be those 4,000 hours we were talking about, which was premium content. Uh, and then there was those 2,000 hours, which was about TV-ish kind of content. Then you have the entire UGC content coming in. So when you're looking at it from your point of view, what's changing uh, from the content and programming lens? You know, I think... Uh if I had to paraphrase, I think everything is changing and everything is still the same, right? I think we're all fighting for eventually time, right, from people um, and eyeballs. Um, whether it is UGC content, whether it is long form, short form, whatever have you. I think what's changed probably in the recent past um, is that, the, like you mentioned, the UGC content is now occupying a lot of the time spent of people and that's entertainment. A WhatsApp or what is entertainment for people. So the definition of entertainment um, is very different and it's democratized like you mentioned, right? Because anybody could start um, a video channel and it could do really well. So I think the, the thought process that we constantly think about is, you know, will the next creator come from someone who's creating UGC content? While they may have mastered the art of um, creating short form content, what is to say they cannot create something that's more episodic in nature, more long form in nature, because definitely they have some insights on what people want to watch. They might have it at a 20 second level. What's to say they don't know, they, they may not be able to create a story that's a two hour narrative. Because ultimately, I think, and I say this for everyone here, I think what we are fighting for is to try to const constantly understand what people want to watch, right? And what people behaviorally, habitually, um, how are patterns changing? And I think there is some insight there of something that, you know, um, long form content creators in a way um, were never thinking about, which is okay, 20 minutes, 20 seconds um, is snackable and it's very, it's something that people really want to spend hours doing cumulatively. 
they might be spending two hours watching two, 20 seconds of you know, thousands of videos and that's fine. Yeah, and, and how does that, uh, you know, that sort of seamlessly seems to move, right? So from your perspective, what you're saying is even a UGC guy who must be creating shots could later, it's just probably the constraint of the platform they are working in at this point, not their creative constraint, right? And hence, as you guys give that opportunity, they could go beyond from that perspective. Yeah. Now, again, this is also interesting because we, uh, just about six months back, we used to be debating whether it is the traditional channels, uh, is it going to be new age uh, production houses, then we said, is it going to be the UGC guy? And Darshan, now we are saying, is it going to be a human, right? AI creating content and, and, and AI sort of redefining the entire ecosystem. How do you see that changing the entire thing? Well, actually, um, the content creators, we've actually been on the back seat. I think it was the advertisers who've always been ahead, innovating, creating stuff. I mean, if you ask the audience, how many of you actually have discussed something at home and then very next day you saw, or very next minute you saw contextual ads in your social media feed? Pretty much everyone, right? So they've always been using that. But uh, the content creators somehow never tried that. Uh, I think the future is personalization where uh, everything's going to be hyper-focused, hyper-personalized. Uh, all of us may sit and watch a series, but we'll all have different endings, right? Because I may be saying, oh, good, that guy died. And in my show, that guy actually died. But uh, Mr. Narayan may say, I hope he doesn't die. And in his show, he, he survives, right? Uh, that's going to come. And, and it'll come faster than we believe it will come. And uh, we ourselves are experimenting with um, uh, AI-generative contextual content, right? Uh, we are exploring how we can show ads on our screens that is real time, that is relating to what's actually happening outside there. So uh, technology has made it easy and uh, it's made it far more economical now to experiment. And I think now the content creators will actually catch up with the advertisers in, in terms of experimentation. And uh, yes, the future is uh, AI driven and uh, it, it's going to be interesting where we're headed. Wonderful. I'll just add a point here. Please. Not just AI, the generative AI is going to be the next big explosion now. You make a serial or a movie in Hindi, you will dub it through AI in German, Russian, Chinese, Tamil, Telugu, with lip sync, with the same actor's voice. It's a reality today. It started. In six months, you will see this happening. I've put up a serial today, which is in Hindi. But if I'm sitting in Punjab, I'm watching it in Punjabi. I'm sitting in Tamil Nadu, I'm watching it in Tamil. In Germany, it'll be in German, Spanish. Same serial, same actor, same voice. The language is dubbed. And the lip sync is also there. Lip sync I, is also. Throw in a Sora into that. <laughs> and then Just wait for this. <laughs> Actually, no, that I'd, is interesting. I'd like to add one more thing. You don't even need the actor now. You don't even. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the actor also will be, you know, created by AI. Yeah. Yes. And, and I, I hope they don't generate employees also on here. <laughs> yes. No, I think in, in that note, you talked about personalization, right? And if that's where we are headed, what is the next battleground for media? We always used to have, and I've been in many of these panels where we used to say, is content king or the distribution, the emperor, we, we're done with that. What is the next frontier? Is it the operating system? Is it data? Uh, is it uh, the entire set of uh, uh, you know CPGs and EPGs which control the experience from that perspective? What is the next battleground for media? Any of you want to? Look, before we get into that battleground, I have to sort of highlight something which is more today. You know, I mean, we're not talking about connected TVs, right? While we are talking about personalization and hyper-personalization, we we are also at the same time talking about the family coming together and watching it there, right? So, you know, what we were not factoring in a year back or two years back about what is bit being delivered at your home through Connected TV, we are discussing more and more in our boardrooms today, yeah. right? Uh, if you look at the numbers that have, you know, which are there in front of us, which is sort of, I think, about 50%, uh, it has grown over the last one odd year, and 90% of the television sets bought were all connected TVs, okay. right? Smart TVs, right? So while at one end you are creating content which is for exclusive individual viewing, there is also going to be a lot of content which is going to be 
watched together in our home, sitting and having your own, your, you know, 8, 8.30 dinner, right? So I think the, the mode of distribution has sort of slightly shifted. shifted. But, uh, but the fact is that, you know, both, both of them are coexisting. While we will have extremely hyper-personalized content, which is both, you know, user-generated as well as sort of taking into account the, the new tech, AI, all of that, but you will also need uh, wholesome viewing, which is an experiential process for us as in, you know, I mean, most of us here. Uh, I mean, I, I go back like five years back, and the first thing that we were creating, or six years back, we were all sort of trying to tell our, our you know, makers that, look, everybody was going to watch it here in your mobile set, right? Go solo. Go solo. Yeah. There was a campaign by somebody, yes. right? But equally important is that let's sit, sit and watch it together, together. Yeah. right? So I think, you know, there are different worlds together, all of them overlapping, which is why it is becoming more and more exciting. Someone said exciting is a very difficult mm. word today. Mm. Uh, but, but yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I couldn't agree more on the, on the CTV point, and I think we see it every day. You know, just three years back, you had 20% of smart TVs that were connected TVs. Mm. Today you have, I think, 80% of, of smart TVs uh, have been connected at least at some point of time, and, you know, just a stat, which is that there's only 10% of smart TVs that connect only once. Uh, since they're bought, and that's at the time of installation. Uh, but everyone else is connecting. I think while the smart TV penetration is obviously on the rise, right? You have some 12, 13, 14 million uh, smart TVs that are sold every single year. Uh, and that's only adding to replacements of what, were, what we refer to as dumb flats or the dubbar TVs. I think where, the, where you'll see a sudden inflection point and that's something that I think all of us need to be very, very clear about that that's coming. My sense, my personal sense is that it's coming a lot sooner than we see on some of the charts of the growth of connected TV. Because in one fine swoop, when you have uh, fixed wireless access that explodes across the country, what you see in any case today is I, I think about 38 to 39 million broadband connections. Uh, that number is actually more like 55 to 60 million today because there's a lot happening at the last mile which doesn't make it into the reports, yeah. right? And then there's hotspot and tethering, uh, but that's not frequent consumption, that's one-off consumption. I think over the next, and I'm saying this cautiously, yet optimistically, which is that in the next 18 to 24 months, the CTV household number could potentially be as high as about 120, 130 million. Mm. Because in one swoop, that broadband, which today is generally required for that kind of consumption at uh, you know, higher quality and, and bandwidth, uh, which is at about, say, 55 million today, will, you'll suddenly see an inflection point through things like uh, uh, air fiber, geo air fiber, and uh, services such as that. But I think while that happens, I think what we can't ignore is that there's a reason we used to consume TV as easily and frequently as we did, right? Which is the experience, the consumer experience. And I think what's also happening simultaneously is that every manufacturer, every OEM, is now focused on creating the best possible experience for the TV not to be used as just a linear device, but as a genuinely smart device. And as that plus the penetration of broadband comes together with every household now having access to it at an affordable price, my sense is the future of one part of entertainment, a large part of entertainment, is on a living room device uh, and pan India. This cuts across languages, this cuts across age groups from a child to a uh, to a 70-year-old, it cuts across genres of content, it cuts across, you know, today we watch, and you know, we watch what we refer to as TV channels, 
uh, will now be watched probably via streaming. That's true. On, but it's the same content, right? This is the same content, yet it's different content and a different platform. So to me, that is the most immediate uh, new, new Wave frontier. That is going to hit us, right? Yeah. And, and while that is sort of below the surface at this point in time, you made some really thoughtful comments. Everything behind the TV is changing. That's what you're saying. It's now an IP wire connecting. It might not be wireline also. It might be air fiber, right? Wireless. <laughs> wireless. So, which means that we're suddenly going to have a 100 million plus ecosystem of people connected, starting with SCCA audience, people who are paying money, going, filtering down. So, that's a new ecosystem which needs a completely different experience from that perspective, right? Wonderful. And, and that, I think, is going to be one of the first waves that will hit us, uh, which is going to completely shake up the entire programming. That's the point you're making. That's interesting. And Rabindran, then, you also made an, uh, when we were discussing before, an interesting point. That also shakes up the entire distribution ecosystem. Yes. Everything is played out of the cloud. Yeah. You're creating fast channels. You, you, you're on, and, and like Farsad said, every OEM manufacturer wants his own ecosystem of channels, True. right? How do you think that is going to play out on the distribution? See, side? we've been representing to the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting to change the downlinking and uplinking policy from satellite. Now, satellite has several limitations. We don't have an Indian satellite, so a lot of foreign exchange goes out. You're dependent on these US, Russian, European satellites. Secondly, there is only one beam that goes across the footprint. Now, when the world is changing, the technology is changing, I can easily play out from the cloud. Yeah. My Jalandhar beam will have Jalandhar ads in the same content and ad breaks will be different. Same as in fast channel, same as in connected TV, linear TV will also be able to do that. Secondly, quality of broadcast will improve. I will no longer be forced to broadcast in SD because the satellite bandwidth is so expensive. Yeah. Once I'm going cloud, it'll be HD 4K. Now, we all have 4K TVs, but there is no 4K channels available. Then you will have 4K channels, you'll have HD channels, quality will improve. Advertising market will see tremendous growth across. When a local guy can advertise on a Star, Z, Sony also, the growth will be tremendous and the technology exists as of today. The government just has to change the policy. It's not compulsory to go via satellite. You can also go by cloud. You can also go by P2P, uh, fiber. And the same punishment that is applicable on violation of standards on satellite is applicable to these delivery mediums. Yeah. And then you moderate that. From the so the advertising market, the content market, tremendous revolution will happen. It will certainly boom. And, and it's interesting, Vishnu, because Farzad said cross-platform, right? Uh, Rabin was talking about how then we are going to distribute it across. So when you started Hoicha, you said OTT platform. Are you, I mean, any longer looking at it that way or are you looking at it as a cross-platform across audience and wherever I can distribute it, I'll go and occupy that particular? No, I think, you know, mm -hmm. things are moving vertically and horizontally yeah. at the same time, right? And uh, the way I think about it is that on a content front, You've got various types of content, and on the platform side, you've got different platforms and different, um, you know, ways to um, get to the audience. You know, and I think it's a realization of a lot of the things that you know in, in conferences like this, where we talked about convergence and spatial and interactive and a lot of those I, I, things. I didn't, I didn't get started on IoT and a fridge having a screen, yeah. so I've not even. <laughs> so. You know, you, you've always talked about and heard about all these, you know, content being interactive and spatial computing and spatial content and something that you are immersed in. I think a lot of that is just that um, it's possible today at a affordable cost. Expand that and etc. While you can see the reality behind it. And there was a mode there called cinema mode. And as you switch on the cinema mode, essentially it feels as if you're in a movie theater. Okay, and they've got options about, do you want to pick the front row, do you want to pick the back row, yeah. do you want to be in the balcony. So, so you feel as if you're in, the, in a movie theater at that time. Theater. Right. Um, it doesn't help as a film producer, but still. <laughs> but uh, I, I think that's spatial computing, right? Yeah. We're talking, we've talked about this for the longest time, right? Um, where you, now the, the challenge thrown back is, okay, are we making content that is relevant for that spatial era? Are we actually from an auditory and a video visual standpoint, making content that lends itself well for that to happen. For that to happen, 
Yes. Right. So, um, I think, you know, things will keep evolving. Ultimately, the, the size of the screen, the pipe through which it, uh, the content is delivered, will keep evolving. Um, but as creators, I think essentially, uh, the way I look at OTT in general, is that ultimately we're in the content business, wrapped around great technology, great experiences, great um, services, etc. But ultimately, at the heart of it all is the content, right? That's what people are buying it for. Also. So you have content and platforms, but it's how you create that experience yeah, as a creator, as, as, a, as a media house. Yeah. And, and you very nicely mentioned that, uh, you know, the, the cinematic mode, yeah. it's a progressive evolution, right? Yeah. You don't jumpstart the audience into something that they can completely not absorb, right? right. This, is, this is interesting. And if I have to create that kind of an experience, hence the question, Darshan, you can also chip in, do we have the metrics? You know, in a cross-platform world, do we have the content metrics of a cross-platform content metrics? Or do we have a content consumption metrics across? Do we have the advertising metrics to actually, because the advertisers allow a cross-section of audience, but as, as media houses, do we have the, the metrics to actually serve up and be able to do that? Actually, you know, I was wanting to tell you that you've got too many gray-haired people on this panel. Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> you've got too many gray-haired people on this panel, <laughs> except Vishnu. <laughs> And hearing Vishnu speak, I realize you actually needed to get somebody young on the panel because we're talking about the frontier of media, right? Uh, like Saugato mentioned about the habit of getting people together to watch television, uh, that's again gray hair thinking, right? Uh, today, the youth are actually getting together to watch content, but they're not getting in front of a television. They're getting inside a game, probably. You, you can go and watch a music concert inside a game. So you get all your friends, all of them come together, they experience the concert like they are together, but it's happening inside a game. And it's beyond most of our thinking, because we are not born into that ecosystem, right? We are still trying to adapt. Uh, so do we have the metrics? Uh, it's happening all over the world, right? Uh, the technology exists, there are brands experimenting, there are content creators experimenting. Uh, it already exists, it's just that we have to take the leap of faith in India and try to do it because uh, it's, it's happening, whether we like it or not. And uh, if you ask the young people, I don't know how many people below the age of 25 here in this hall, uh, any show of hands below the age of 25? Okay, there is a few. Do you guys even watch television? Right. So, most of them don't, right? Uh, so, we, we may have more connected TVs selling, more smart TVs, but it's people like you and me who are buying it for our different bedrooms. <laughs> it's not them. But, but now that you say that, I think that sh sort of throws up the monetization question, right? Yeah, and, and that's what most advertisers will say. If these guys are not watching, they are fragmented, you know, do we, do we believe we need to go beyond advertising subscription like we are seeing here? Do you see transactions coming to the fore? Do you see content commerce coming to the fore? Do you see monetization changing on the new business models emerging? Look, <clears throat> I think there are several opportunities and, and with each kind of content and each kind of platform, there's a different opportunity. But at the heart of it, I think we all know that AWARD is a large opportunity. And within every model, there are things that need to be got right. There is an evolution, both on the content creator side, the platform side, the advertiser side, in this case, right? How much do you pay? What's fair value? What's the best benefit that you get out of it? And so on and so forth. The subscription business is a, is a huge opportunity staring this country in the face. It's a different thing that, you know, over the last few years, everyone's played the game a bit differently. But if you look at it, India actually already had or has about 120 million subscribers. And I'm not talking about OTT subscribers. I'm talking about people who pay for entertainment, yeah. which is they pay for television, right? So they're subscribers, not like they don't subscribe. Yeah. The question to ask is that at that math, if it's such a profitable business, then why has, on the digital side, um, you not had that deep penetration and that retention? That's because you weren't able to create a habit just yet for the user. The minute you're able to create a habit, 
the Indian consumer, much as anyone may say anything about them, is extremely happy to pay and progressively, as we go along, even happier to pay for a value for money proposition. But value for money doesn't only mean, you know, discount your price and I'll buy you. You need to be relevant to them every day in the same way that uh, the television is, right? So there's the subscription is a large opportunity if cracked right. And I think there's several, the industry is working towards making that happen. And then you talk about transactions. I think increasingly consumers are going to decide, um, and especially with, with the growth in, in, uh, in digital payments uh, and microtransactions. And while these are all fancy words, the truth of the matter is that when you have a 100,000 plus, which may become a million plus creators, then the consumer is going to want to decide what they want to watch, when they want to watch, how much they want to pay, because we cannot also force creators to make content the way that content has traditionally been made, which is make me something every week or make me something every day. You'll kill the creator uh, you know, spirit in, in that mm. sense, because there are some guys who, who just don't do that. Right. You know, they don't tell fiction. They're, you know, they you pay for a vlogger, right? A vlogger is going to be like, I'm going to vlog when I want to vlog. You don't tell me to make a one hour vlog because you have to fill a slot and so on and so forth. So as that sort of progresses, and as you, you know, as Darshan was saying, when you, you talk about, let's say, having this immersive party in the house, whether it's coming from a connected screen, I'm still passionate about it, or, you, you know, you have it coming in from augmented or VR, the fact of the matter is that there will be a microtransaction, there will be a transaction. There will also be a transaction on content commerce or social uh, commerce, right? So I think the country is very, very ripe. And, and if the, the offering is of the right, uh, there is a product market fit for an offering, not just for a service. It will gain, gain the kind of traction that we have not seen in the past it will almost become like an impulse purchase and not a planned purchase. But for that, you're going to have to be at that counter and therefore discoverability uh, right. itself is the big challenge for the model uh, to work. No, discovery, yeah, discoverability, discovery is, is a major challenge and, and I think the telcos realize that. But what you're saying is interesting. You're saying it's a new India, award can grow, subscription there is a lot to play in but you'll also see transactions coming in, you'll see content commerce coming in, and many other things coming in from that perspective, right? Uh, Just make a point that it's mm. not, I think what we need to open our minds towards is that, mm. you know, I, I keep hearing quite often that TVOD doesn't work in India. I think it's all about how we try it. It's about what you put out. Mm. In the traditional sense, if you were trying to monetize a four crore rupee uh, episode, into eight episodes and say that, you know, let me try the TVOD model and let's see how many people pay for it. It's not going to work, right? One in a hundred may break even. So it's the kind of content that you put out. It's the pricing that you put it out at. It's the frequency that you put it out at. And it's about making it relevant to a larger base of people so that they're willing to pay for it. Pay simplistically for it. Yeah, absolutely. No, great. And I think we're hitting the clock, but I think this is a very interesting discussion. There are a lot more that we that we are here to talk about. Somehow the format doesn't allow me to take audience questions. So guys, you can interact with the speakers post this session. But I think given so many things we have spoken about, I just want to wrap this up by asking one question. I mean, I, I, I'm sure some of you do, but if we had a billion dollars to invest, some of you do have it, but what are the two things? What are the two top trends? Uh, which you will put your money behind. Darshan, if we can, we can just go around the panel, start with you uh, on thoughts on what would you put your money with? These are all good talk. Obviously, right? MA, uh, ML and AI, because... AI and? ML. And ML, okay. Because that's the future and that's where the money is. That's where your money is going. Okay, yep. great. Abhin. So for me, it'll be the user experience, which is unified. Right now, different OTTs, different channels have different formats of curating and putting it out to the audience. Unlike cable DTH where there is a unified format, this language, this genre channel, one place. 
this sort of content one place so while in urban areas if i'm subscribing only to netflix i'll know what to watch where and the ai of netflix will throw out only what i want to watch but the future is of aggregators hmm. where i will pay one subscription fee i'll get all otts all content curated now if i want to watch sam bahadur i don't want to find out where it is available it's curated for me under the hindi movies latest and i will watch it wherever it is available then the content will become cross platform it'll be available uh, netflix amazon television and various other social media so that unique that experience which is unified unified, unified. yes which is together is where yes and then monetization innovation monetization you can't rely totally on subscription we are a country whether we like it or not which has a mindset uh, which has been created by our successive governments of getting freebies to hum content ka paisa nahi dena chahte hain pass hai kya discount pe lega kya amazon ko aap prime mein bundle karke de dijiye free mein kahin aur se charge ke liye mujhe mat bataiye charge kiya i am happy so that's a big challenge advertiser will always be squeezing you now in future what will happen is you will be in uh, building in e-commerce hmm. i am now broadcasting a movie of salman khan where he is wearing a big being human t-shirt and i can click and buy it yes that's where the money will come from a big money will come from there will be lot such lot many such ideas many such worldwide things. which will be implemented but what you want to do is then unify that experience and then be able to monetize yes. that from that perspective yes. fantastic Fazal, you've spoken about a lot of avenues, and if you get it right, uh, but where would be the two things you will put your money on? Well, first, I don't have the money, <laughs> but nobody will use you here. If, <laughs> if I did have the money, or I had to raise the money, uh, I'd, uh, I'd essentially, you know, I don't have any one idea, but I think that the largest opportunity that stares us in the face is, uh, at a high level, making, I. I'd probably make uh, something which is valuable to the creator ecosystem. The creator ecosystem. Okay. Because when you when you look at that, it essentially covers all of the aspects of monetization, distribution, and the creator itself. Because that to me is is where the future is. Fantastic. How do you federate it for the creators to come in and then use that ecosystem and then be able to grow? Fantastic. So Gato. I think I'll agree with that one. I think we are we are all a content company, so I think it all starts with the creator. Yeah. So if there is a possibility of federating, a, a, you know, possibility of doing that, then that is where I think the next big. You know, we are all in the business of making hits, so uh, that's one. And how we, like uh, you know, Rabindu just said that how do we monetize it cross platform? Uh, that is something which will probably sort of put if we had that billion dollar, which we which clearly don't have. <laughs> okay, but you you certainly have started doing that in the gaming space, federating it, getting more more content guys involved. Yeah, because I mean, in addition to what everybody else said, I would spend a lot of the money acquiring all the content that already exists, um, on you know, on preferably perpetual basis, um, because there's a lot of you know content which is movies and shows, the ones that people want to watch at least, which exists, right? And if you're able to aggregate that um, and place that. Um, in 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 one platform or a few platforms i think that's a compelling user proposition from that perspective in addition to creating the creator ecosystem and investing in new content i mean ott is still at best for for most players at least uh, you you're lucky if you're putting out one original show a week uh, tv does i don't know 5 hours of original show a day right so i think we've got an immense road to cover in terms of the volume of original content also but yeah, i think that combination is very powerful which which is legacy content what what we call legacy hits and what the newest stuff is going to be what what goes forward of course and and in the meanwhile we have here and now challenges like cac and ltv to solve for right but beyond but guys i think this has been fabulous and thank you guys for sharing so many different perspectives we spoke about how content uh, is really going cross platform the metrics for that how in the entire business whether it's award s what the monetization is changing 
the battlegrounds are changing in terms of connected TV and what's happening on the OS. The distribution front is changing, and, and, and the entire thing is becoming a borderless ecosystem. But there is so much more we have left behind. We haven't spoken about UGC, federated content. We haven't spoken about uh, the entire set of ecosystem. We didn't even start on we making our non-white AI avatars and all of that. So we will get there at some point in time. But beyond, uh, the speakers are there. I'm sure all of you would want to interact beyond this. So I won't take up this time. Uh, but thanks a lot, Vicky, for, for coming up with a topic which is about the next frontier of media. I'm sure uh, this has been enlightening, whether you are a creator, whether you're a production house, whether you're a media guy. Thank you so much for participating. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, gentlemen, before you guys leave, please let's have a photo up. Can you please step ahead in the center of stage? Thank you so much. You were fantastic. Thank you. Sir, I've seen you. Ladies and gentlemen, these dignitaries definitely know what the future is all about, like always. Thank you so much. And uh, please hold on because our next session is also quite interesting where the uh, media telecom and bandwidth is going to look into many other aspects. Thank you so much, sir.